If you guys want some coins for the new Foot Fantasy promo, please check out MMOXP.com. Their link is down in the description. They're very fast, they're very cheap, they're very reliable, and if you use my code REMA, you can get yourself 5% off your order. This supports the channel greatly. What's up guys, my name's Ash and welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video guys, I've got some updated 442 custom tactics and player instructions, but just before we get into today's video guys, I'd very much appreciate it if you could drop it a thumbs up as that does really help me out with the YouTube search algorithm. Also subscribe to the channel if you are new so you never miss out on any videos like this one. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you are notified when a video is posted. And with all that aside guys, let's get right into today's video. Okay guys, so starting off with the custom tactics for the defensive star I like to use this on balance this is so we're able to press when we need to press and we're also able to drop off and be that more conservative when we need to be so it does give us the very much needed control and balance in the defense now moving on to the defensive width I'm currently using this on 47 this is so we're primarily in a narrow shape so we can cover all those attacks through the middle but at the same time we also have that natural width where we're able to cover the wide areas too so we're good at attack uh, good at defending those attacks through the middle and we're also able to cover the wings too now moving on to the depth guys i like to have this on about 58 with the 442 this is so we're not you know too deep with the defensive line where we're always getting pinned back but at the same time the defensive line isn't too high to the point where we're always getting through board and uh yeah so 58 depth has been nice and balanced with the 442 so you know i like it because it makes my defensive line sit in that more natural position you know where they're not always too far back and they're not always too high either so yeah that's why i have it on that now moving on to build up play guys I suggest you have this on balance this is because it is definitely the most controlled and the most consistent form of build up play in FIFA 23 now something like fast build up is very good when the gameplay is fast but it very rarely is and if you try and use fast build up on laggy gameplay you're going to have a very tough time because basically your players are moving quicker than you're able to link up the play if that makes sense because you know you've got those delayed inputs so balance is definitely the best in most scenarios. Now, moving on to chance creation, guys, I suggest you use direct passing. This is because it makes your attackers bunch up against your opponent's defense, and it allows you to do those overpowered isolation plays. It also means your attackers move around in a very dynamic motion to make those goal scoring chances happen a lot more, uh, which doesn't really happen in other tactics. Now, some people don't like direct passing, which is okay. And if you don't, I would suggest using something like forward runs, as it's, I would say it's better for like lower skilled players, players that struggle with direct direct passing uh, but yeah forward runs is like a preference thing uh, the reason I don't like it is because it's very easy to get counter-attacked because it pushes your players very far into your opponent's box so direct passing or forward runs depending on what type of player you are now moving on to the width guys I actually have this bang on 50 the reason I do this is because the 442 is obviously a wider formation uh, and I always think 442 is quite balanced in the way that it plays you know sometimes you can be a little bit narrow sometimes you can be wide so I actually just have this on 50 you know completely default so we can kind of do a bit of both with it you know there's not really too much thought there I just left it on default and it actually played out very well for me now moving on to players in box I like to have this on six this is so we can get some players into the box to create chances but at the same time we don't overcommit everyone to the point where we get counter attack so it's been nice and balanced having this on six as for corners and free kicks I have these both on one because there is a corner kick routine that I use which requires me to have these both on one you you guys can check it out in the top right hand corner of the screen now moving on to the plays you want to use guys in the striker positions because this is a two strike formation you do have a bit more variety and freedom with who you choose because in those one strike formations you kind of have to get the balance all in one player because you have to compensate for the fact that there's one striker instead of two but in a two strike formation you can get the balance between the two players so what I like to do is I have one more clinical finisher in Robbie Keane and then I have a bit more of a creative player in Jairzinho next to him so we have like a creative to finisher dynamic it works out really well for me but if you guys want to use like two lengthy finishers or whatever that is completely up to you but I kind of suggest going for like a balanced strike force where you have one creator and one finisher now moving on to the left mid and the right mid you're going to want to use winger style players players that are very good in attack players with skill moves if you can get it that are quick uh, that they're agile they are able to pass cross shoot basically do a bit of everything in attack you don't have to worry about their defensive stats too much uh, but we'll get on to that with the player instructions 
options. Moving on to the left centre mid, you kind of want to use a more defensive player. This is somebody that's going to act a bit more like a DM in the team. Uh, but yeah, I like to go for somebody with very high defensive stats. If you can get somebody with a medium high work rate, that's perfect. But don't worry too much if you can't. In the right centre mid spot, I like to go for more of a box to box midfielder. This is somebody that's going to attack and defend and have a bit more freedom in the team. Uh, so I'd suggest somebody with very well rounded stats so you're able to attack and defend with them. If you can get it, a high high work rate is super beneficial as you get the maximum contribution in attack and defense. But again, don't worry if you can't get the perfect work rates. Moving on to the left back and the right back, I like to go for a bit of a balance between the two where I have somebody like Roberto Carlos who's a bit better on the ball and then I have Cafu who's a bit more defensively solid. Uh, I just like having that dynamic between the two fullbacks, but you guys can go for two attacking fullbacks or two defensive fullbacks. It's completely up to you. As for the centre backs, they just need to be those quick players, the strong players, medium high work rate if you can get it. Uh, and yeah, there's not too much to say about them there. And yeah, I'm just using Chesney and Goal for chemistry. Now, moving on to the player instructions, guys. On both strikers, I like to have stay central and come back on defense. The reason we do this is because we don't want them drifting off into the wide areas. They are our strikers, so we do want them to be in those central areas. We don't need them to cover the wing. Uh, we also have them on come back on defense because this actually helps with the attack. So basically, when you lose the ball, these players are going to come back a little bit deeper, so they're kind of like connected to the rest of your team. If you have them on basic defensive support, they kind of like sit higher up the pitch, and the rest of of your team comes back quite deep so when you win the ball back there is like a big distance between the rest of your team and the attackers so by putting them on comeback on defense when we win the ball back everyone's a bit closer together and it makes building up the play a lot easier now some people like using getting behind but I think it's very one dimensional and I don't really like it and I think mixed attack is a lot better to you know get in the full potential out of both of these strikers so mixed attack is better in my opinion now for both the left mid and the right mid we have come back on defense and get into the box for cross we have them on get into the box for cross so they're always making those transitional runs to get involved in the attacks when we're near the penalty area if you have them on balance crossing runs sometimes they're kind of like passengers they're very passive and they don't really get involved so by putting them on get into the box for cross it means they will make those runs to get more involved in the attacks it doesn't mean you have to cross the ball to them it just means they do have those movements i also have them on come back on defense for a similar reason to the strikers where they sit in a better position when we don't have the ball and when we win it back they're in better better positions to help us build up the play so it's kind of like a structure thing which is why we have them on comeback on defense now for both centre mids, although I have one defensive player and one more box to box player, I have them both on default settings and cover centre. The reason I do this is because I kind of let the work rates carry them a little bit. So for example, in this left centre mid spot with Jorginho, although he's on balanced attack, because he's a medium high player, he's going to automatically be a bit more defensive minded. So we can get away with having him on balanced attack because his work rate will allow him to be more defensive anyway. If you, if you don't have the correct work rates, for example, you could put him on stay back while attacking but because Jorginho is already a medium high player I just have him on balanced attack because it doesn't really matter uh, for the right center mid as well balanced because like I said Pogba is a bit more of an attacking minded player uh, and his work rates will carry him through that as well so since he's a high medium player um, he's going to be very good in attack and he's also got the medium defensive work rate so he does come back and do his job but Jorginho is the more defensive minded player uh, but yeah I kind of let the work rates carry them there but you can alter the instructions based on the type of player that you have have there. Uh, as for both fullbacks, I have them on stay back while attacking. Now, the reason I do this is because the 4-4-2 is wider than a lot of the narrow formations I use, uh, and we don't really need additional support from the fullbacks. The main reason I use fullbacks in a lot of formations is because I need to add extra width to a narrow formation. But with a formation like the 4-4-2, we've already got the right mid and left mid to cover those wide areas, so we don't really need any more support there. So it's better to just have the fullbacks on stay back while attacking, so we're better defending defensively and we don't get counter-attacked but yeah as for the center backs and the goalkeeper i just leave them alone and i do not touch them at all but yeah guys they're my custom tactics and player instructions for the 442 if you guys have enjoyed or found this useful i'd very much appreciate it if you could drop it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you are new so you never miss out on any videos like this one and don't forget to turn on notifications so you're notified when a video is posted and with all that aside guys I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and i'll catch you all later Peace.